Hi there, my name is Will and I'm a developer advocate at Kestra. Today I'm going to be walking you through some of the new human in the loop integrations that we've added into the new version of Kestra 0.17. If you're not familiar with what human in the loop is, it's basically where you want to have your workflow run, but before it can go and do a next step, you want some human intervention to be able to approve or confirm that something is correct. This is really useful if you've got complex pipelines that you wanna make sure have done the right stuff in their earlier stages before progressing too much further. Now in 0.17, we've added the feature to be able to pass inputs when you resume your workflows. So now you can add inputs, which you can then use in later tasks. I'm gonna show you a quick demo of this new human in the loop integration with the pause task and how you can pass inputs through when you press resume. Let's check it out. With AI being the buzz at the moment, I thought it'd be only appropriate to create a cool little demo using the new OpenAI API. In my flow here, I've got an input here, which is going to ask the user for a image prompt. And what we're going to do is we're gonna generate a number of images based on the prompt, and then it's going to ask the user to select their favorite image as the human in the loop parts, and then it will send that final image selected to our announcement channel in Discord. First step here is we're going to create the three images that we're going to then vote on. It's then going to send those three images to Discord so we can then vote on them. So we've got image zero, one, and two. And then this is where the human in the loop integration comes in. Using the pause task, we're able to then pause our flow and we've got a message here that will then tell the user that they need to go to this URL to be able to resume it. And then it will then wait for the user to resume. And when they resume, they will be prompted to pass an input. In this case, it will be an integer between zero and two. So they have to vote on one of the IDs of our images, which we can then use later on. Once that has been resumed, it will then send one last Discord message where it will then use our input from the resume here to then figure out which image we're actually sending. So let's give this a go. So I'm going to ask for a cat, and when I press execute, we'll see it come up in Discord. As we execute this, it's going to generate our three images. We can see that it sends the first three images, and then it hits the pause, and it's going to continue to pause until we manually resume it. So as we can see here, it's given us three images of uh, cats. We've got image zero, image one, and image two, and then we need to then click on one of these links to be able to resume it. So I reckon uh, image one one is probably my favorite. So if I click on this link, it will then send me to the flow execution page. And here I can click on resume. Here is where I can then put in my number. So I thought number one looked pretty cool. And when I press resume, we'll see in the Gantt chart that it then finishes pausing and it was paused for about 26 seconds. And then it does send our final message to Discord. And if I head back to Discord, we'll see that it's now posted our final image inside of the announcements channel. So some of the examples of how powerful human in the loop can be and how you can passing in inputs allows you to then run more automations to complete your final workflow. I'd love to hear what you're gonna use human in the loop for. So let us know in the comments or you can join our Slack community where you can share more of us there.